people from the tube, welcome back to another bunch of things. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. So, we all know hunting season is about to begin, but it's not only hunting season, it's also boa breeding season. So, let's get started. So, as I mentioned, it's also the cooling down process for a boa constrictor. We're going to talk about a little bit in more detail in a second. So, we're going to find out today if my pair are on the right weight and in the right conditions to breed this year. They're definitely uh, on the edge, but we got to make sure that we get the weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh them. I'm going to talk a little bit about the cooling down process. And then we're going to go and show you how I'm going to do certain things. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I got to do is check her weight. Uh, just to make sure that we got enough, enough body consistency just to withstand the entire breeding season. So I'm going to grab a pillowcase, a scale, and see what's going on. So, what works for me the best is I grab a pillowcase, it's the safest, and I put the snake there without stressing it out, and really quickly I put it on the scale and see what the weight is. So, let's see. Okay, so the scale is not reading it, just only the snake. So, I'm gonna have to do some math here. Alright, well, we are on the way. We are close to six pounds so we're gonna have to put a hold on the whole situation and assess in a couple of weeks so yeah I don't like the fact that she's on the weight like it doesn't look like it but it's not on the right weight for to withstand an entire breeding season so now I don't know how accurate this is so I'm gonna switch to another scale and see what that says all right, so yeah, I did verify the weight with a different scale and we are under. Now, I'm studying this in late September, so I can still start the process of cooling down due to the fact that they're actually a really, really, really good feeder. Now, what we're going to do is just increase a tiny bit the, their meal sizes and see if that brings us up. If that brings us up, then we're great. If not, unfortunately, it's gonna have to be to the next season. And yeah, it's not ideal, but the safety of the snakes is the most important aspect of it. So now that snake is relatively smaller than regular snake. That's a hog island boa. Um, normally people will have the tendency to start breeding those guys with eight pounds. Um, still, that snake is not underweight physically, it's not a snake that is starving, it's not a snake that you can see rib cages, stuff like that, they're fine. The major issue is, and why you want a decent weight, is once you put them to pair with the male, the male is going to be in the cage with the female, for four or five days at a time, then he comes out, we feed, and then comes back in. The problem with this is that that put a lot of work on the female. Now, once the female starts developing follicles, uh, boas are, most boas, are life bears. So, meaning they don't put eggs, they actually give live uh, birth to, young, to their young. So, you want to make sure that they have enough weight in their body so they can develop those babies properly and that they can do everything nicely. So that's why it's imperative to the snake to be in a higher range on the weight, um, even though that for her size, she's in a great weight, but I want to make sure that we have enough by the time that she gets off food and she stops eating, um, that she still have enough 
body weight to withstand the breeding season and get those babies straight. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm still going to start decreasing my temperatures. And the reason being is if I if we get to the right way for whatever reason and the temperatures have not changed, then I will lose the window to breed them. Reason being, snakes are really sensitive to weather changes, uh, temperature, stuff like that. So decreasing um, on, on, on a period of time, decreasing that temperature will trigger their natural behavior to breed. So if I don't do that and the snake still gets into the right way, then my chances of the snake actually breeding are gonna be really slim to none. So I'm gonna still decreasing instead of doing it the way that I wanted to do it, I'm gonna replace the bulb that I have, which is a 50 watt bulb. I'm gonna put a 40 watt bulb and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So if you haven't seen the videos, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a link here for when we upgraded to these tanks. Now now so the the, the thing with this cage is that they're the wooden cages. The problem with these cages is that uh, there's no way for me to put heating pads on it. So I only merely rely on bulbs. So what I'm gonna do is uh, slowly start decreasing the wattage and uh, start decreasing the temperature. So when those temperatures start changing outside and in the room, logically the temperature on the cage is gonna be affected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my 40, 40 watt bulb in there I'm gonna give it a couple of days and I'm gonna be monitoring the temperature. You gotta do this gradually. You don't wanna just dump the temperature automatically, whatever, an X amount of degrees. This tank is normally during the day, it's around 89 degrees, and during the night, it drops to about 85, 84. So the idea, the target temperature that we're looking here is 75 degrees. So the, the thermostat in the house is set up at 72 degrees. So once I hear that, that the heater go off, that immediately triggers me to verify my temperatures, check what's going on. With the furnace at 72 degrees and the 50 watt bulb, I'm able to reduce my temperature to 80. So if I bring my 40 watt wall and halfway through the cooling period, I hit my 75. Now I know I'm in the right temperature. I start bringing the furnace up just to man maintain, and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna I'm not gonna show that in the video, but I'm gonna bring them back in, I'm gonna feed them and and monitor and I'm gonna give you guys an update in a week or two and see where we are. So unfortunately how I wanted things to go didn't go that way, but hey, this is not animals, this is nature, there's nothing you can do about it. So but I'm gonna make a series of Either if I breed or I don't breed, I'm still gonna make a series of videos about this topic because it's extremely important to understand how this works and I will get into more detail as we move along. So, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Click the notification bell as the name says to be notified every time that I upload a new video and I will see you in the next one. Pancho out.